Hey guys, Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to you with a live one-on-one -on -one with the Comic Doctor. Hey, you know what guys? Usually I come on here and I do live CGC unboxings or I do what's in the press. Haven't been doing a whole heck of a lot of these one-on-one -on -one videos, but I thought it was uh, pretty important that I come on here and discuss something that's happened over at uh, Warner Brothers. Uh, there's been a bit of a power shift, so I want to uh, go over that with you today. Guys, if you're new here, I'm Kevin the Comic Doctor. I'm, a, I'm an authorized CGC dealer, and I'm a comic book presser uh, located up in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. And on this on this YouTube channel, we talk comic books. We look at comic books, we discuss comic book collecting. Uh, if you're a comic book uh, crazy man like me, you might want to consider subscribing to the channel, liking the content, and always hit the notification bell so you know when I go live. And also by subscribing to the channel, when I do go to over to my live chats, I can, uh, I'll can i have access to your thoughts and your comments over in our chat window. I think we have a few guys over there right now already giving their two cents worth. And again, guys, I'm not sure if you heard this or not, I am going to head over to the Hollywood Reporter website uh, because there has been a shift. Uh, before I go there, check this out. That's right. I don't know if you heard this or not, but James Gunn, that's right, director James Gunn and producer Peter Safran are now co-CEOs over at uh, DC Studios. I believe they're referring to it now as DC Studios. Uh, Zaslav uh, went in there and cut Mr. Walter Hamada out. He is no longer the head of DC. We now have James Gunn and Peter Safran. And this, my friends, is very, very exciting. Uh, let's go over to The Hollywood Reporter. It really does break it down nicely. Uh, we'll read it together and we'll come back and discuss, you know, the actual news and also discuss how this may impact those DC comics we don't see very often on my CGC unboxings. Aside from a few collectors who submit, you know, all CG or all DC DC books, there's only a handful. Peter G's one of them. I know that, and there's not many others. Let's see what they say over at the uh, Hollywood. It's this is a very short article. We'll read it together, and we'll come back and talk about it. All right. So here we go. All right. So yes, the uh, big big title: DC Shocker. James Gunn, Peter Safran to lead uh, film, TV, and animation dis division. Okay. The duo report to David Zaslav and assume the title of co-chairs and co-CEOs of DC Studios. Crazy, crazy stuff, guys. All right. So the hierarchy of power in the DC universe really is changing. In a stunning turn of events, filmmaker James Gunn and producer Peter Seifert have been tapped to lead DC's film, TV, and animation efforts as co-chairs and co-CEOs of DC Studios, a newly formed division at Warner Brothers that will replace DC Films. The unprecedented move in which a top director will assume a top executive post marks the end of a months-long search by Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav to replace DC Films boss Walter Hamada, who departed the studio last week. That search had all of Hollywood guessing and playing executive bingo for who would land one of the most coveted and challenging jobs in town. Uh, in recent weeks, Gunn and Safran were spotted on the Warner Brothers lot, meeting with Warner Brothers co-chairs Michael DeLuca about future projects. And according to the sources, the initial overture to Safran and Gunn came from DeLuca over the summer, even as the studio was in shaky talks with producer Dan Lin to take the job. Gunn will focus on the creative side of things, while Safran will focus on the business and production side. Both are expected to continue to direct and produce projects, respectively. They'll report directly to Zaslav and work closely with Warner Brothers uh, film bosses DeLuca and Pamela Adby. Sources say the deal runs for four years and Gunn will be exclusive to DC. So no more Guardians of the Galaxy for Gunn. No more Marvel products. Gunn is... Gunn is now exclusively at DC. You will no longer see uh, Gunn, I think, after uh, Guardians 3. That's it. That's it. Um, the goal is for them not just to be producers, but to truly function as executive executives, even as Gunn will occasionally uh, hone a movie. Unlike Marvel Studios, DC has multiple films set in separate creative universes, and according to sources, Joker filmmaker Todd Phillips works on the upcoming sequel, which goes into production later this year, will not fall under Gunn and Safran's purview, and instead will be overseen by DeLuca and Adby. 
Uh, Matt Reeve, Rat Reeves, who worked under uh, Hamada, has a budding universe based on his Batman movie. It is unclear under whose purview Reeves' future projects would fall, but if everything else moving forward would be under Gunn and Saffron. DC has among the most entertaining, powerful, and iconic characters in the world, and I'm thrilled to have the singular and complimentary talents of James and Peter joining our world-class team and overseeing the creative direction of the story DC Universe, said Zaslav in a statement. Their decades of experience in filmmaking, close ties to the creative community, and proven track record thrilling superhero fans around the globe make them uniquely qualified to, to develop a long-term strategy across film, TV, animation, and take this iconic franchise to the next level of creative storytelling. Gunn is one of the more respected minds in the world of comic book filmmaking. He came up in the indie film space and became an A-list director in 2014 with Marvel Studios' Guardians of the Galaxy and his 2017 sequel. He jumped to DC in 2018 to develop The Suicide Squad after rival Marvel, <laughs> after rival Marvel fired him as director of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. The studio later reinstated him, uh, and that project is due out in March of next year. His DC foray, The Suicide Squad, was critically adored and spawned the hit HBO spinoff, uh, Peacemaker, starring John Cena. Gunn is currently working on a second season. Saffron came up as a manager where Gunn was among his clients and is fully enmeshed uh, in the world of DC. As producer of the $1 billion grossing Aquaman, it is upcoming sequel, as well as The Squad, Peacemaker, and Shazam, and its sequel. His relationship with Warners extends back 10 years and includes a $2 billion co uh, Conjuring horror franchise. It's a Saffron company... Uh, recently re-upped its uh, production deal with Warners. Gunn and Saffron will work with top execs at WBD, including TV boss Channing Dungy, HBO and HBO Max's Casey Blows, uh, oh, sorry, Blois, U.S. Uh, Networks Group Chair and Chief Content Officer Kathleen Finch, Consumer Products, blah, 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 blah. All right, so guys, uh, I think you get the gist. Let's go back. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What do you think? I mean, this is something that the DC uh, uh, universe was lacking, a creative mind like a James Gunn to get in there and 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 really lead this the, the DC franchise in a much more um, accepted, uh, I guess, future and also in a much more um, lucrative future, hopefully. And I think, you know, he's, he's, he's proven it. You know, over at Marvel with Guardians and then over at DC with Suicide Squad and Peacemaker, which if, I don't know if you've seen Peacemaker or not, if you haven't, why haven't you? Peacemaker is amazing. Get in there and watch it. So this could be it, friends. James Gunn could be the Kevin Feige of, um, of, uh, of, of DC. In fact, uh, I think... Uh, I remember hearing that, that he was actually kind of going to work hand in hand with Kevin Feige in the uh, Celestial Universe and the Space Universe uh, at the Marvel in the Marvel side until all that Twitter nonsense happened last year and they fired him and then reinstated him. Anyways, DC took great advantage of that, brought him over to their their side, and now look at this. He is now co CEO. Let's go over to the chat. I'm curious to see what you guys are are saying about this. I just gotta find my chat because it just disappeared on me. Give me one second. I'll go over to my chat window. Boom. And where is it? Uh, restore chat. Pop out chat. There it is. I think. Oh, my chat is. Oh, there we go. Okay, excellent. Give me one sec, guys. There we go. Let me get this chat going. All right. Let's see what you guys are saying today. All right. Um, and I think we're on top chat. No, I want live chat. So I had this go. I had too many windows open and it messed me right up. All right. Let's go over and see Wayne. Wayne comments and says, I learned this and have made somewhat of a jump. Golden Age, Silver Age, DC, Marvel. Yes. Hey, James, how are you? Uh, so you already started moving over to the DC side. I talked about that a few months ago uh, as prices for DC books were kind of waning. It was a great opportunity to get in there and maybe pick up some good deals. The prices I have noticed on DC keys are starting to slowly tinker up and I and or, you know tilt upwards. And I think this news, and I encourage you to go over to the Hollywood Reporter, read, finish reading that article off, uh, you know, this is, I think, a really exciting time uh, in the, in, in for the for DC Studios. Hey, James, how you doing? Digital man. Hello, everybody. Hey, how you doing? Sam says, hit that like and subscribe, and I would have to agree with him. 
Uh, uh, Rob Ben, I'm here. You may begin. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, come on, here we go. I have to I have to send you more green books. Okay, I mean Green Lantern. Yeah, you should. <laughs> hey, Mike S says, hey, Kevin, was just talking about this today. Just got to find those D key DC books. Listen, I you know I have a soft spot for uh, uh, Demon, Jack Kirby. I bought another one from a guy down in the States. It should be here actually in a day or so. I, I don't know. I have a soft spot for that book. But all this DC stuff, 1970s, 19, you know, 60s, 1950s, books that, that uh, honestly have, have really slumped or I think are going to start perking up. And and don't be surprised, my friends, if in the next, even the next few weeks, we start hearing news of, of projects coming from DC Studios. Uh, if you saw, I don't want to spoil this, but if you saw Black Adam, and if you haven't seen Black Adam, listen, it's not a, it's not, uh, you know, The Godfather, guys. It's not a, 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 an amazingly written uh, film, but it's a heck of a lot of fun. So get out and watch Black Adam and stick around for the post credit scene because something really significant happens there, which kind of gives us a clue as to the direction of where the DC universe is going to go. Um, James says, and I just missed you there, James, hold on. Uh, James, <laughs> look for B, C, and D level characters given a push by gun. I'm thinking of characters like Constantine, definitely. Swamp Thing, Animal Man, The Question, Booster Gold, Lobo, yes. Uh, you know, Vertigo books, all those Vertigo comics that you probably have stashed away, all those key books that are third, fourth, fifth tier characters. Yes, James Gunn has uh, has a history of jumping in with very um, more obscure characters, characters that the general public doesn't know. Uh, and I'll be honest, when they, when they announced they were doing the Guardians of the Galaxy back in the day, I was like, why in the hell are they doing that? You know... But they did, and it worked. And uh, and then you know, and then when he went over to DC, they said well, you could choose anything you want to work on. He didn't choose Superman. He didn't choose Wonder Woman. He didn't choose Batman or the Flash. He chose the Suicide Squad, right? Outfitted with characters that most people do did not know, right? So yeah, I agree with you, James. I got a feeling that we're going to start seeing a lot of more uh, obscure characters from the DC universe popping up. So keep your eye out, my friends. Find those keys. Find those keys. And speak of the devil, Peter G is right here. <laughs> and uh, yes, Kevin, always a good time to buy DC, especially silver and early bronze age keys and so many other undervalued and underappreciated books. Yeah, Peter G is our resident DC fan. And I'm sure this news will keep him or make him very, very happy. Mike says, uh, Peacemaker book used to be dirt cheap. That's what I meant to say above. Yeah, and you're right. Um... Oh, I jumped a few. Oh, boy, I jumped a whole bunch. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. Sorry, I'll, I'll get to you there in a second. Uh, DC books used to be cheap. Gotta find those keys. Rob Bin says, thanks for the article, Doc. Reminds me of when the teacher used to read to us in school. I kind of felt like I was doing that a bit. I didn't want to read the whole thing, but I just want to give you guys a gist of it, and I think you uh, get the idea of what's happening over there. Um, very smart to put a really, you know... Rather than just putting a producer, kind of like Kathleen Kennedy over at Star Wars, over at the Lucasfilm, she's not a creative. She's not a creative, right? And when you start giving her creative licensing, that's when you run into problems. Keep your ideas to yourself, Kathleen. You're good with numbers. You're good with publicizing and marketing product, but you are not a creative. So hire the, the good creatives in there to, to, to tell your stories. Unfortunately, she, she, anyways, I won't get into the Star Wars thing again, but I mean, you know, had Kathleen Kennedy uh, been co-CEO of, of Lucasfilm with a creative, I think that would have been a much better uh, um, melding of minds to get a, a great product out there. And I think, you know, you know Kevin Feige is a big star, a big comic book fan. And, uh, you know, and he's been a producer since I think the X-Men. For like a long time, or Spider Man, a really, really long time, many Marvel projects. So he knows uh, and, and what the people want. And um, I think James Gunn and uh, Safran together are, are going to be a good a dynamic duo. I think it's going to be good. Robert Ben, thanks. Okay, sorry. Mike says, I've always been a DC guy. This changes nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> well, I think it might change things for in comic book investors. This is really, really good news for DC at a time when Marvel, I think is starting to kind of wind down. I hate to say it. Um, there was a time there when Marvel was firing in all cylinders, right? Boom. You know, 
Ant-Man and then, you know, uh, Black Panther and then, you know, uh, uh, you know, Civil War. And, uh, almost every single Marvel movie was a lot of fun and it was great. It had an energy to it. But after, uh, you know, after Endgame, it kind of, it's, it's, it's being retooled. And maybe it just needed that, 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 uh, that grace period to kind of find its footing again. I'm hearing out of uh, the Black Panther premiere that it's, it's, it's a much more grounded film than what we've been seeing so far and uh, kind of puts us back on track. I hope that's the case. Uh, but for, as far as DC goes, it's been all over the place. The DC movies are all over the place. Um, you know, I'm not sure if they're getting, you know, like Superman's are key character. Superman is Superman and Batman are the two main characters in the DC universe, and they've been kind of used sparingly, and and in some cases not at all. And, and people are kind of shying away from them, uh, which is kind of weird, considering they are the flagship characters. So let's see if if James Gunn, with the help of uh, Saffron, can get on a, there and and give that studio some direction to get us some excellent movies a continuity that's really makes sense and it's exciting for us to to watch and go and see and support um sam says call him the comic teacher well yeah not too far off from there guys uh uh waning that's for sure uh mike says read the article but but i can't read oh well that's what i'm here for mike jamer is here how you doing jamer what up kev i've been stocking up on bronze age gc horror especially in high grade the prices are just too good yeah, you know what? People were doing that with Marvel Horror about five, six years ago. Now look at the books. Werewolf by Night, you know, books, or Tomb of Dracula's, or Marvel Spotlight on Werewolf by Night. Those books could be had for a song five or six years ago. People kind of had an idea. Even, even the Frankenstein Marvel book is... I, I had a 9.6. I sold it far too cheap and... One of you guys got it off me. Anyways, it's okay. Uh, but these book, these horror, these horror books are starting to really garner. The Marvel books are garnering a lot of attention. Don't think for a second the DC will not go in that direction as well. Of course they will. So yeah, um, good, good on you, Jamer. And also good to be hunting down those high grade books. The high grade books are the ones that are going to reap you the rewards down the road. Sam says the good news is the change in the Green Lantern TV show. Yes. It was supposed to be Hal Jordan. Now they're saying it's going to be John Stewart, um, perhaps Kyle Rayner. No, I think it's uh, John Stewart and Guy Gardner. Who well, I love them both. Um, yeah, well, we'll see what happens. I, I'm, I'm easy. I don't know if I want a TV show. I'm not really fond of the TV shows of, of any. I, I love Pe Peacemaker. Has been a lot of fun, but I mean the Marvel shows have not been all that great in my opinion. So I don't know if I want a character like Green Lantern explored on a tv series unless they do it i don't know i guess it could be done right but we'll see um wayne says i i sold my demon you should have bought mine i would have i could have i should have uh let's see here mike has peacemaker book used to be do i said that already okay mike says black adam is godfather three yeah you can say that <laughs> godfather three is probably still better than than it but Black Adam was, like I said, it was fun. I think The Rock's charisma really goes a long way in it. And all the characters were a lot of fun. The only character I didn't really love that much, because I thought her power was kind of useless, was that the whirlwind girl. Um, very pretty girl, but I thought I would have liked to see her with a little more of a significant power. Um, Wayne Keno Reeves was asked about which character he'd like to play again, and he said, Constantine, I wonder. Yeah, I heard that as well. Don't be a bit surprised if he comes back as Constantine. I would not be a bit surprised at all. Um, although I wouldn't be surprised if he comes back as uh, as Ghost Rider. But maybe he's too old. I don't know. Mike says, can you imagine the question coming to the live screen? Goosebumps. It would be amazing. <sighs> Guys, I'm going to tell you. Two of my favorite DC shows are the 1990s Justice League and the 1990s Justice League Unlimited. Love that show. Anybody watch that? You know, the great opening music with the, with the main team, Superman, Batman, uh, John Stewart, Green Lantern, Hawk Girl, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Flash. And Aqu no, no Aquaman. That was the main team. And then the Justice League Unlimited expanded it. So you had all these different characters in the GDC universe. And yeah, the question was in there a few times. And, 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 and Hawkman was in there. And uh, Plastic Man. And, um, you know, Black Canary. You name it. You name it, they were there. Even some of the more obscure uh, characters were there. And I love that show. Uh, so if they can do anything like that, oh man, that'd be awesome. I'd love it. 
I wish that cartoon would come back, actually. I, I absolutely love that cartoon. Uh, one of my favorite DC properties. Um, right there. Um, Mike says, John Favreau was a creative they needed to run Star Wars. Yeah, I agree. Although I don't know if he was... If he was really in the running at that time, you know what I mean. But yeah, someone like that. I don't think I don't think they needed to have um, what's his name, Dave Filoni. I think I don't know. He's too he's too obsessed with the Clone Wars and his own creations. Um, I mean, he's a, don't get me wrong. He was kind of you know approved by George Lucas, but yeah, John Favreau. He, he's you know, but Boba Fett was a mess, man. So and he was in charge of that Boba Fett show, and that that movie just, that show just stunk. So I don't know. But what he did with Mandalorian is excellent. And again, Andor is, I think Andor is excellent. I'm having a real good time with Andor. Um, uh, Mike Lemon says, I am so happy Harry Cavill is coming back to play Superman. I love him. So am I. Uh, I think he's an excellent Superman. Thank you, Wayne. Cyclone's her name. Cyclone's her name. And wind is her game. And I did not find her at all really that useful. But the rock is the one who petitioned for henry cavill we can all thank uh dwayne johnson yes and i believe that him and uh henry cavill share the exact same agent as well or is it dwayne johnson's wife is henry cavill's agent i don't know there's some kind of connection with agents there so they do know each other and yeah he wanted him back kevin what would be your top five dc keys to get now Ooh, um there's so many there's so many, but ones you could probably get on the cheap that I wouldn't be surprised that, that we're going to see them pop. Omega Man, is it two or three? First Lobo? Look at Omega Man 2, I think it is, right? Omega Men? Or is it three? I always forget. That would be a good one to pick up. I'm going to say Demon. I think Demon number one, I got a feeling they're going to go down that road with Demon. Um, what other ones? Uh, I think any of the Jack Kirby stuff from the 70s, you know, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, all the dark side stuff, you know, uh, what do you call it? New gods, that kind of thing. I wouldn't be surprised if we start playing with that stuff. Big Barda, you know, uh, Mantis, all those types of characters. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing those. I think other ones that are, are still, still can be had, I think, at a good price because, you know, Brave and the Bull 28, of course, first Justice League, um, you know, Justice League number one, um, still are not on par with, you know, the Avengers books in the same grade. I don't believe they are. Um, oh, Zatanna's first appearance. Hawkman 4, I believe it is, right? That's a pretty pricey book, but, I, you know, Zatanna, they've done nothing with Zatanna, and they've been hinting at Zatanna for a long time, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see some Zatanna. Um, you know, uh, high-grade Batman from the 70s, you know, all that detective comics and Batman books, Neil Adams, that stuff's worth money already, you know, but I mean, if you can find that stuff in high grade or get it like in mid grade and press it into high grade, that stuff's money, that stuff's money. And I think it's only going to go up. Um, yeah. So, uh, who, what else, what else, what else? Um, even silly stuff. Silly stuff like what's what you know. Remember the old cartoon, the Super Friends cartoon, when you had uh, Zan and Jaina and the uh, the Wonder Twins, and then you had Marv and uh, the other Marv and is it Wendy? Marv and Wendy, I think. I'm not saying they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna be in the movies, like, but I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing cartoons with them or some kind of comedic tv show with them right so i wouldn't be surprised you gleek <laughs> that's right see the gleek right there again they were talking about a wonder twins and again i would not be a bit surprised if we see something like that down the road um you know uh yeah those are a few anyways guys um oh also what uh, jameer was talking about too horror books high grade horror books from the 1970s late 60s dc probably would be a, a something to pick up too but again don't pick them up if they're dog issues if they're all beat up because that they won't you're going to see you're going to see gains leaps and, and leaps and bounds if the books are high grade that's where you always see significant jumps so try to find books that are high high grade like when I was a fan of Expo, I picked up, I mentioned if you watch my my uh, unboxing, I showed you those two Hulk, three three Hulk books that I got, 969, 898, you know? I didn't pay much for those books. And those books aren't worth a hell of a lot right now. The first Quasar is worth a bit, but the other two are not. But they probably will be in a few years. Um, especially, you know, uh, when, when, when the X-Men come in with that, with that annual I have. But 
But picking up high-grade run books with, with awesome cover art, cool stories, that's always something uh, to look for as well. Let me go back. I got to go up here. Um, uh, James and Just Lee was awesome. Yeah, man. I had the whole thing on DVD. It's great. If you have not watched, I'll tell you, if you, if you're, if you want to see some really fun, if you love the DC characters, I love the DC characters. I really, really do. Uh, but to see them done properly is very important. You go and watch the Justice League cartoon. It's from the bat. It's the same animation styles: Batman the animated series and Superman the animated series. Then they went into Justice League, and it's really good. The voice acting is good. The character development is good. The relationships are good. There's a whole thing going on between Green uh, John Stewart, Green Lantern, and and Vixen and Hawk Girl. It's it's just the dynamic relationship dynamics. It's really really quite good. Even Wonder Woman, like Diana and and Bruce Wayne, have a have a kind of an ongoing, unspoken. Thing, they have a little thing for each other. So even though they're doing, they're doing all the superhero stuff, there's the interpersonal stuff going on too, which is really a lot of fun in that series. And and it's such a well done series. And and aside from that, if you want to watch a good animated uh, uh, Marvel series, go check out Avengers: World's uh, World's Mightiest Heroes. The Avengers. It came out around the same time. I think like 2011, 2012. Oh man, it's amazing. It's it's really quite good. It's loosely based on you know, it's inspired by the, the the by the movies, but it's not the movies at all. There's a lot more characters in it. And I mean the Fantastic Fours and it, Wolverines in it, uh Spider-Man's in it. So, you know, cuz you know Marvel on the television side of things, uh they can use Spider-Man. They can use the X-Men. They always could, especially in animation. It's just on the big in the big screen they couldn't do it. So on their animated series they did get away with that. So check out Avengers World's Mightiest Heroes. It's really a lot of fun. One of my favorite episodes, uh, two favorite episodes. One is when the Hulk beats the crap out of Ultron. Friggin' awesome. And then when Hulk fights, is it Gravitron or Gravi Gravitron? <laughs> Friggin' amazing. Just amazing. It's a, it's a great, great series. Um, totally off topic. Let's keep going here. Uh, remember when Cavill wouldn't shave the mustache for Superman? Well, he couldn't shave it, I think, because he was doing, I think, the... Um, Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible, I think, and he was contracted, and he it wasn't because he they had already shot his principal photography, and that, these were reshoots. They brought him back for reshoots, but he was filming the other movies, so he couldn't shave his mustache off. Yeah, it was terrible. That was absolutely terrible. The CGI to remove that mustache looked so bad. It was so so bad. It was it was embarrassingly bad. That movie was terrible. Yeah, they did remove it in post-production very, very poorly. He was in the middle of filming. That's right. There you go. Uh, that wasn't Henry's fault. He wasn't expecting that reshoot. Exactly. You guys are right there with me. Uh, I just sold the first black man. Oh, well, maybe, maybe you want to hold on that for a little while. Lobo, for sure. We're going to see a Lobo, for sure. Uh, the Green Lantern TV show was supposed to be a married guy, Gardner, Jessica Cruz, Simon Az, and Alan Scott. I heard about that. Now it'll concentrate on John Stewart. I heard John Stewart Stewart and Guy Gardner. You got to have those two together. Uh, Orion and the New Gods, for sure. The first John Stewart. Yes, another big one. Green Lantern. Green Lantern 87, I think it is. Sold my Hawkman 4. Wayne, you had a nice lot of nice ones there. Listen, I've sold lots of books that I regret selling, and maybe you got a good buck on it. So as long as you're getting what they're going for, that's all right. Stay away from Green Lantern, Sam says. I agree, Michael E., and Michael E. said, what did he say up there? Oh, yeah, it wasn't his fault. That's right. Um, James says, they should Justice League Dark. They pro and Oh, yeah, that's they, they definitely will go that route as well. We talked about Gleek. Bring back Gleek. That's right. Captain Carrot. Ooh, I hope not, but maybe. By the way, where can we buy your shirts? Yeah, you know what? I bought these to go to the, to the Toronto Comic Con. I've had about five people ask, can I buy a shirt? So I just have to sit down and order a bunch. For me, I guess. I don't know. I don't know anybody really would want these shirts, but I, I could order some more. I'll order a bunch and I'll have them, you know, at the shop. Um, but thanks. Yeah, I'll order some more. Black and white or should I get different colors? Um, ambush Bug. Yeah, another one. Hey, Luke, how's it going? Speaking of X-Men, Hugh Jackman will be signing for CGC in January. Yes, I saw that. $450 US. No thanks. Oh, yeah, Hawk and Dove. Another one. Steve Ditko. Hawk and Dove. Big one. Yes, Hawk and Dove. For sure. 
Um, I think Hawk and Dove. I also think, uh, you know, um, a Nightwing. You can get a great... The Nightwing is a, 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 a character. What, Teen Titans 44, I think it is. Uh, Cyborg, New Teen Titans 26. These are all books in 9.8 you can get for... They're, they're not cheap. I'm not saying they're cheap books, but they're still very reasonable by today's you know today by today's standards and and these are these there's gonna be a lot more attention on these jonah hex i've never been a jonah hex fan myself but yeah they tried the jonah hex film it didn't really work out i guess they could do something with that what about batman the animated series sequel uh they did a lot of batman the animated series they did a lot of seasons they did batman and robin um, yeah, I'd be up for that. I'm sure Kevin Conroy would too. He really loves playing that role. Maybe he's sick of it now. I don't know, but I'd be, I'd be for that. Mike guess says, personally, I wouldn't get a book signed by Hugh Jackman unless it's his face on a comic. They're going to recast Wolverine and it could be even better. Don't pay ridiculous prices for sleb signatures. Eventually they will recast actors unless you're looking for a quick, uh, flip profit. Yes, but, <laughs> but, um, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine was the first, right? The first and the one that has established and brought that character to the forefront of, of, of I guess, our pop culture, right? In terms of, of the X-Men. People know, when people think of X-Men, they think of Wolverine, they think of Hugh Jackman. And yes, they are going to recast him and someone else is going to get in there. It's the same way I look at, you know, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. But I agree with you. Would I have Hugh Jackman sign my Hulk 181? no. But if I had a 2-0, I might have him sign it. Or if I had a qualified copy, I might have him sign my qualified copy. Or I might have him sign my low-grade copy. But if I had like a 9, you know, if I had a nice copy of, of Hulk 181, no, Hugh Jackman ain't signing it. The only people I would ever have sign it, even though I don't like signatures to begin with, would be, most of them are all dead now. So <laughs> it won't be getting signed, right? Um, so yeah. Uh, but I, I, I mean, look at if I, if I own a copy of Hulk 181 and I love Hugh Jackman as Wolverine and I want my copy signed, then guess what? I'm going to have my copy signed. I don't care what anybody thinks. It's my book, right? Uh, but keep in mind, when you go to sell that book, you know, 10 years, 5 years, 1 year, whatever, however long, how many, how many years later, keep in mind that that might hinder the value of the book because now you've just uh, diminished your... Um, uh, you just diminish the amount of people that may, you know, who might want to buy the book, right? Because there are people who do not like signatures, period. So if I've got, say, a Hulk 181 signed by, you know, Herb Trimp and uh, Stan Lee and everybody involved in in in, uh, in Hulk 181, it, it's a 9-6 and it's signed by everybody. It's a big book and it's an expensive book. There may be only so many people who would ever even spend that money on that book because some guys just want it a 9-6, with no writing all over it, right? So, I mean, it, it's all personal preference. And keep in mind, Mike, how many Hulk 181s are? There's thousands of Hulk 181s out there. So a few with Hugh Jackman's signature is not a big deal. And another thing, I don't think a lot of guys are... I, I, don't, I think a lot of people will have him sign stuff, but, I mean, $449 US to have him sign it? I know Luke here had Kit Harrington and uh, Emily Clark, em Emilia Clark sign his Game of Thrones books, and Ewan McGregor signed a Star Wars magazine. That was big money. I wouldn't pay that. I, I personally wouldn't pay that. But some people like that. All the power to you. It's your collection. I, I, I know I spent five hundred dollars on an action figure. People called me crazy, right? We all have our own addictions. We all have our own loves and likes. So, to each his own and her own. So it's okay. Um, Let's see here. Ch -ch -ch. Mr. Miracle, Big Barda. Oh, um, Mike says, I was hoping to go out as the comic doctor for Halloween. I need that shirt. You know, it's funny, actually, guys. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far, far away in the year 2000, this guy right here ran for city council in Oshawa. I ran for a regional councillor. Um, didn't do bad. I, I had only one month to campaign. I got 17% of the vote. So that's not bad. If I had the whole summer, I might have beat that guy. Um, but anyways, I ran for council and um, my beard was a lot you know, more black back then. But a buddy of mine for my birthday, because my birthday is on Halloween. It's on Monday. Um, a buddy of mine went as me. <laughs> I've had people go as me for, for my birthday. It's pretty funny. Another friend of mine, Gerald, uh, I think when I was 
turning 45 or 40. He, he dyed his hair, he, his white hair, he dyed his hair black and dyed his beard black to match me and he went as me. So you wouldn't be the first to go as the comic doctor. Uh, Luke says, Mr. Miracle Birbada, Big Barda, exactly. Hey, 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 John, how's it going? See you this Saturday to pick up that Star Wars book. Mike Emmond, Cyborgers DC Presents 26, not New Teen Titans 26. I got mixed up. New Teen Titans 44 is... Um, is Nightwing, and that's the new. That's the first appearance of the new Teen Titans in 26 with Cyborg. Uh, thank you for the clarification. I have qualified 180. You guys think I should get Hugh to sign it? I mean, to me, that would be a book I would do if you're so inclined to spend like $650 Canadian on a on a signature. But that would be the book I would do, just because it's kind of a it's it's a, it's a talking point. It's a it's a conversation piece. It's a, it's a neat thing to have. But again, I wouldn't. You know, you you don't you don't feel so bad having him sign something like that. Sam says Hugh Jackman is to Wolverine what Christopher Reeve is to Superman. Yeah, hundred percent. And listen, you don't think Christopher Reeve signed comic books? Of course he did, and well, when he could, and um, I'm sure Henry Cavill signs comic books. There's always going to be new actors coming around. You know, Michael Keaton. Uh, you know what's his name? Uh, Adam West signed Batman comic books. Batman has signed Batman comic books. You know, it's just kind of a trendy thing to do. And again, it's it's all personal preference. And, you know, I, I would not buy one unless it was a really good deal. But other people, you know, other people might. Um, if you want a SIG, would probably get a variant or a mag with him on it. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool too, Luke. I, that'd be kind of nice. Rob Bin says, Wayne, did you see the video of McFarlane sigh on a comic? What is that? Sigh or sign on a comic? Wayne, I was just watching an auction last night. Tons of unopened Star Wars figures. Boba Fett, Return of the Jedi went for about 35. Oh my God. And what's crazy about that, Wayne, is that's Return of the Jedi. That's not even Star Wars. That's Return of the Friggin' Jedi. So that, that's like books. That, that's from, that's, those are toys from 1983, 84. And, um, the Return of the Jedi figures are now starting to become pricey as well. They, they were quite affordable about three years ago, and now those are becoming crazy. Um, uh Wayne says no Rob Bin John Beer. Well, that's I'm, I'm glad John. I hope I'm glad you're happy. Peter G says Spectre books with Neil Adams artwork. Oh yeah, Spectre. Another good one. Huge. It brought uh, to TV or movies. King LSG. Hey, how's your day been? Not bad, King LSG. Thank you very much. A very tiring day. I'm going to be heading out of here soon and and chilling out and going to bed cuz I I was up all night with my sick dog last night. Um, you never would think your dogs can get allergies and get sick from allergies. Well, ours did, and it really sucked. Well, guys, there you go. I think I'm going to end it there. Listen again, if you guys are just fine, are just getting in here now. Yes, big news over at DC. Um, James Gunn and uh, Peter Safran are now co CEOs of DC Studios. Warner Brothers has now a new division called DC Studios, re uh, heading headed up by these guys. How is that going to affect our DC comic books and their prices? And is it now a good time to get out there and start hunting down those DC comic books, even some of those more obscure books that many might not have their eye on because the prices might be very, very affordable? And who knows? What the mind of James Gunn has going on in there, right? Who knows what he's going to do? Is he going to bring these obscure characters to the forefront? I have a feeling it'll be a nice mix of, of characters we come to know already, that we, that we love already, and some more obscure characters. So yeah, I think it'd probably be a good idea to get out there, guys, and do your best. Happy hunting. Find those DC Comics. Stash them away, because we have no idea what kind of news will be coming into DC Studios in the coming weeks and months. But I do think we're going to hear some news sooner rather than later. Guys, um, that's it for me. Uh, uh, again, let me know what your thoughts on this are down in the comment section below. If you missed our chat, uh, what do you think? What do you? What would you recommend we go out and buy uh, in, in, in terms of G DC Comics? If you could give us a a good uh, some good suggestions on what to look for, do so in the comment section below. All right, guys, that's it for me. Have a fantastic night. Uh, I'm trying to find my goodbye screen. I always have a hard time saying goodbye. Here we go. Oh, there. But, 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 but. <laughs> I always, there it is. <laughs> Guys, again, thanks so much for popping by. Uh, 
on your way out, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button and the notification bell, and I'll see you probably pretty soon with another unboxing as I have about two or three boxes headed back from CGC as we speak. Until then, Arrivederci, take care, have a great night. Bye now.